What is up guys? Maxim Abs with a brew day video for you. This is going to be my first brew day video. Um, it will be a very nice day here in Colorado. It's kind of cold this morning, a little chilly, but uh, we'll get her started, get it going, and uh, walk you guys through my steps and show you the, my uh, setup. And uh, here we go. So we got the sparge water already heating up. I just got a little 14 quart pot. I'm gonna have to get a new one, another one, because that one's just not big enough, almost. So I built this stand actually. It's just a we had a two by twos, and the two wings on the end there they just fold up. You can just fold them up and they lock back in place and then I can wheel the whole thing back in the garage if I want so that works out pretty handy and uh, it's positioned so that the height of these things is just taller than uh, than a fermenter so but it works out pretty well <clears throat> I'm gonna need two tanks though I think so there's my mash tun thermometer everything ready to go and my boil pot some of the other accoutrements. So here we go. Okay, we've added our strike water to the mash tun. We're going to put in some 5-2 stabilizer. Get that mixed in there. Closer back up. And let it sit for a couple minutes. Uh, heat that up, and we should be good to go. Okay. We're just gonna measure the temp. One, 169.1. We're gonna take it because I ain't pouring it back out. So, add our grains. This is gonna be an Irish red, FYI. Grain pouring technique. Slick. So now we just give her a stir, put some in, give it a stir, put some more in, give it a mo more stir. Is that a word? More stir? Smells good. Doesn't look red though. And I'm Irish, but I don't have red hair. So I guess that must be where in Ireland. I'm sure my family was royalty, you know. I just thought, man, did I close that valve? <laughs> that would have been awful.
would have had the valve open, beer spewing all over the Ellen creation. Um, we get this stirred in. I did this this mash a little looser. I'm not sure what that does to your beer, but rather than four or uh, one and a quarter quarts per pound, I did 1.3 because it seemed like the last time I did a brew, it uh, it was really thick and I wanted it a little looser this time, so hopefully that does it. So we shall see. how it goes. Maybe you guys can comment, let me know what uh, thinning out your mash does, if anything. Well, looks pretty mixed. close the lid for now. Well, I got pretty close. I'm at 152.4 and I was looking for 153. So that's not too shabby. So now we let it sit for an hour. Uh, while we wait for that to mash, we surf the internet. Listen to some tunes. Alright, so uh, now that our mash is done, I do a, uh, a test to make sure that we have conversion and I just get myself a, a white plate and some iodine. Get it at uh, Walgreens or whatever. Open her up. I actually did this once, but I forgot to start recording, so we'll do it again for you. Just get a little bit of the, the sweet nectar out of the mash tun. And drop a little bit of iodine in there. And you can see that it stays brown. That means that there's full conversion. If it turns uh, purple or black, then you didn't get it. So, looks like we're in good shape. So, now we're going to start the Vorloff. Okay, to Vorloff, just start the. Open the valve up a little, just a little bit, get her going to set that grain bed down. And you can see it looks pretty. Uh, Looks pretty cloudy, but it'll clear up, hopefully. We'll see. You know how it is. When you do it and you're not recording it, everything works great. But as soon as you put a camera to something, then it turns to crap. So, we'll see. We'll do this uh, two or three times and see where we're at. Looks good. So I don't know what you guys find, but when I was warloffing, I used to do it like really low, like really slow like that. And it seemed to work okay. But what I found is I got a stuck sparge really easily. So now I just try to open it up a little bit more and just do more of them. And I don't run into as big a problem. I don't know if you guys have the same deal or not, but let me know. Hoping it's okay. Looks like a great color though, doesn't it? This is gonna be awesome.
Can you hear the woodpeckers? Fucking woodpeckers. Hate them. Shut her off. And then I do the uh, Jake CPU nut thing. I have a piece of aluminum foil with a bunch of holes stabbed in it. Inside here. And it just releases it. And I have this little bungee cord just to hold it up because I think what was happening is this, the seal the seal on this mat on this uh, Coleman cooler is so tight it would actually create a vacuum in there and it wouldn't let anything come out so I just need something to prop this open just slightly so that it allows the water to drain through or the work to drain through so I'm hoping that that solves my problems We'll keep warlocking. There, I think now we're we're getting it. That's looking pretty dang clear. And the color is awesome. So Still got a little couple of floaties in there, but I'm okay with that. So now we'll move our pot into position. Like that. And we got our hose. Now we'll open her up. And begin the looking pretty good. back a little bit now I'm just gonna take a little bit so I can take a refract test to see how it is all right we're gonna take a refractometer test refractometer this comes in very handy Pipette. Try to get your work down to about 60 degrees, I think is what they wanted at. Let's see where we're at. Looks like... One eighty ten eight oh seven or one point oh eight seven eight seven. Let's say that for the first runnings. That's uh, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Here's how she's looking. Looking pretty good. I had to. Uh, slow it down just a tad because I need to heat up more water. I don't have a, I don't have a big enough pot for my sparge water. So I'm thinking I'm going to have to get another one. Here we go. We're almost at a boil. Getting there. You see my little hop spider. I just Same thing without putting the legs across it. I just put a hook on there. Call it good. 
I got a buddy that he puts a stainless steel nut, like a big, big old stainless steel nut, drops it into the, the bag, and that keeps the bag down without floating up and stuff like that. That's a good idea. I might have to, might have to do that next time. That makes sure that it stays down there, stays open. Cool. We're at 6.75, 6.8 gallons is what 6.83 was my boil size and my pre-boil gravity was uh, let's see I think pre-boil was 1047 so I think that's perfect I didn't have my pre-boil gravity written down on my my recipe so I'll have to go check that out hopefully I'm within within range and boil her down to I believe 5.98 so just under six gallons and I'm done boiling well we're at the hot break foaming up pretty damn good and uh, I'll uh, Terps Aquarian Kit, spray bottle in hand. Looks like we're gonna keep her under control this time. So I wanted to show you guys um, a little trick. You know when you throw your wort chiller in in the last 15 minutes, um, and it's cool and it sort of cools down your word at the same time what I've done is uh, I got this little wire mesh thing at my local restaurant supply you can probably get one anywhere and I just set it over the top and set my wart chiller on top of that and uh, that way as it's boiling and heating it's actually heating this uh, the wart chiller up and the steam is sanitizing it all at the same time or at least a little bit and then that way in the last 15 minutes when I drop it into my my boil it uh, it doesn't shock that it doesn't shock the uh, wort so much so it's uh, it seems to work out pretty well it, it still drops in temperature a little bit but not as bad as it used to so uh, just an idea for you guys if uh, you're thinking about it and what it also works good for is if you're uh, doing your boil and what have you outside it keeps leaves or whatever else from falling in and you don't have to have your your cover on and it still lets it escape but it keeps the the big stuff from falling in your uh, your boil pot just an idea thought you guys might think that's pretty cool almost forgot the world flock tablet put that in there last 15 minutes well, I put it in at about eight minutes but I think that'll be okay so you see I got the wart chiller in there, still got my little screen over it, and uh, let's see, we'll show you here, I got a little tub, and it's full of cold water, and then I'm going to add some ice to it, so what I do is I initially run, this actually goes through here, and it's connected to the, the wart chiller on that side, so I just run some cold tap water through it initially just to get it sort of cooled down and what have you and then after that there's a pump actually inside of here like a water fountain pump and I have that you guys have seen this all before I'm sure uh, and then I just connect this up to the other end of the wort chiller and then recycle that so it recycles the, the really cold ice cold water so and I think that works pretty well rather than just running water out of the house the whole time I can get kind of pricey so but and I got these quick disconnects which work pretty good just clip clip these ones on and you're down the road so works pretty good getting close now of course I've said we're getting close like what 50 times already didn't looks like I should have boiled it a little 
harder because I'm not quite at my boil volume was supposed to be 5.98 and it looks like I'm still over 6 so that's probably about 6 and 6 and an 8 or so so and I got 5 minutes to go I don't know that it's going to boil off that eighth of a gallon in 5 minutes so but we'll see All right, flame out. And we're cooling her down. We'll see how long that takes. Shouldn't take too long, actually. And now we're going to add some add a bunch of ice. I don't do the salt water thing with this just because I don't want that salt water inside the pump. So. I'm actually going to grab my lid try to cover that as best I can I want to get this water really cold before I start running it well I'm always a day late and a dollar short on this camera thing but so I, I connected went ahead and connected the pump you see if you can let me see if I can zoom in there a little bit okay so you see it's just pumping the water through the hose and then down into the work chiller and then back out again and the water coming out of it is sort of lukewarm I guess just I don't know, I'm not sure, but it's, it's not too bad. So it's better than using a bunch of uh, tap water. And I think some people actually just use their frozen water bottles. I think I've seen B. Meyer do that. That's that's a good idea. I might do that. Then they're not wasting a bunch of ice out of your ice maker. So, But I was going to show you guys. Remember I was saying I don't know if I could get to my six-gallon mark? Well, after you cool everything down... Um, I was supposed to be at 5.98. I would say that's probably 5.98. What do you think? That's not too shabby. Now we're gonna... Now transfer from the pot to the fermenter. And I do it kind of slow and high. That way, it's plenty aerated when it uh, when it finishes doing its thing. So I think it should turn out pretty well. Here's hoping, anyway. All right, so we transferred our wort into our fermenter. Now we're going to take a gravity reading before we pitch our yeast. Give it a little spin. Looks like we're at 10.16. Two ten sixty four ish.
we'll call it 1062. So 1062, that's, I think that's higher than my recipe. My recipe says that it was supposed to be, wow, I'm uh, 10 points high. I was supposed to be at 1053. And I'm at about 1062-ish. So, I don't know whether my efficiency is higher or what I did, but I guess I'll take her. 1062, we're calling it. So, here we go. We got the fermenter moved down into its little spot. That's going to be my next project is build a, some sort of fermentation chamber so I can get my temperatures exactly where I want them. Right now my basement stays about uh, 64 to 67 degrees just depending on what it's like outside. Um, and so when I pitched the yeast here a minute ago the wort was reading 66, so I put a little blanket on there. I'd like to keep it around 68 degrees, and we'll see what happens. Um, but this is where it'll sit for the next week. I'm thinking I'm going to leave it. I usually just do a primary for um, a couple of weeks. I usually put it in for three weeks and then just bottle or keg it from there. But I'm thinking with this one... What I might do is leave it in the primary for seven days and then move it to a secondary and leave it there for maybe two to three weeks. And then I'm going to keg half of it. I got a little, little mini three gallon keg. So I'm going to keg half and I'm going to bottle half. And uh, I'm going to see what the difference is between how they taste. So. Um, uh, we'll give you guys an update at that point.